in Oppenheimer Park, now then known as Powell Grant, and was a really important team for the community. It united the first generation and the second generation to cheer for the team, and they were champions in the Terminal League from, I think, 1926 to 1941, and were also very popular among Caucasians in the area because of their skill. And Mr. Kami Nishi here is the last surviving member of the Asahi baseball team, um, so he'll say a few words to Thank you. Uh, I started a baseball team from 1914, and uh, we uh, lasted until 1941, so uh, we were about 100 years and 100 years uh, And uh, we were elected to uh, Canada and Baseball Club of Fame 30 years ago. And uh, we see sports report of him and uh, two years later on. And uh, I would say just across the corner, the uh, Indy House up there, those days. So uh, I was kind of watch the baseball a lot. Uh, I pray for that uh, uh, Japanese Buddhist team, league, as well as uh, Japanese league. And 1949, As I go to baseball club, I was 17 years old. And I'm 94 right now. And uh, I have a family of the baseball club. That's a little bit about the story. Thank you. and also the broader communities around here would gather in Powell Grounds to watch the Asahi. They were the only non-Euro Canadian team to play and win in the City League Champions, the Championships. They would have been Japanese Canadian athletes, both from the Powell Grounds area, and they also um, recruited players from other Japanese Canadian enclaves, such as Kitsilano and Fairview. Um, and they won the City League Championships from 1926 to 1941, which was a very impressive feat because they were smaller than their opponents and they couldn't compete with the heavy hitters and the strength of them, but they won by playing brain ball, which was a strategy they used um, that involved bunting and squeezes and they just ran really fast. And baseball helped bridge the gap between the first generation immigrants and their second generation children because it gave something for the community to rally around and to be proud of and enjoy together. And it also helped bridge the gap between Japanese Canadians and Caucasian Canadians because the Caucasian Canadians were so impressed by their skill and really enjoyed watching the Asahi baseball team. Uh, although the Asahis never played as a team after the forced removal from the Palace Street area, um, some Asahi did set up baseball in internment camps. They played games between the camps and also um, baseball helped build bridges with the local communities that were in, in some places near the internment camps. So for example, Mr. Kaminishi, who we just heard from, he moved to a self-supporting site in East Lillooet, which was divided by the, from the town of Lillooet by the Fraser River. And at first, the people in the camp of East Lillooet were not allowed across the bridge into Lillooet, but Kei Kaminishi started a baseball team, and when the townspeople saw that, they got interested in that, and he suggested they play the game. So the first time that the Japanese Canadians in East Lillooet crossed the bridge to the town of Lillooet was to play a baseball game, and that fostered a relationship between the two communities. Uh, the Asahi story is one of the most celebrated and documented stories in Japanese Canadian history. Uh, as Mr. Kaminishi said, they entered the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in 2003, the BC Sports Hall of Fame in 2005, and as then the commemorative plaque there was installed in 2011. Um, there are also numerous historical, fictional, and children's books published about the Asahi. Um, Pat Adachi wrote the, her first book about the Asahis in 1992, and the Nikkei National Museum produced a traveling exhibit in 2005. There's also an online exhibit on the Virtual Museum of Canada in e website in English, French, and Japanese. And the Asahi story has become well known in Japan too. There's a sports journalist named Norio Goto who introduced the story in Japan with a documentary and a book. And he actually did so much original research in that book that we've now been translating 
that book, um, and it should be available in English form in the next year. Uh, more recently, the Asahi story has been popularized in Japan through manga and a feature film, which premiered at the Vancouver International Film Festival in 2014. Some of like you may have seen that. And there's also been an annual tribute game played in this park in honor of the Asahi since 2006. Uh, this year it's on August 27th. And inspired by the Asahi legacy, the Canadian Nikkei Youth Baseball Club was established several years ago. And they organized tournaments and toured their Shin Asahi team, or the new Asahis, to Japan. They did that in 2015. Uh, so behind me, 